It's about informing the people with the facts. To know what's really happening in Thailand. Inside government, business, society. With real players. Talking to leaders and decision makers. Seeking answer with perspective, issues that affect Thailand's future. This is Thailand. This is the Insider Thailand. Hello and welcome to a special episode of The Insider. In the past few years, Thailand has undergone major reform to restructure its economy and a new wave of domestic and international confidence prevail over the country's current direction. However, the global economy has also transformed dramatically in recent years. Capital flows are much more dynamic and new forms of financial transfer have the potential to replace legacy systems. On average, the world economy is still experiencing a slow recovery from the 2008 crisis, but competition for capital and markets is reaching new level. What will this mean for Thailand and how can Thailand ensure a stable financial environment for sustainable economic growth? Today, the governor of the Bank of Thailand Mr. Virathai Santi Prapop, join us. สวัสดีครับ. สวัสดีครับ. Oh, thank you very much for joining us, uh, the insider. It is very uh, special privilege to talk to you today. Do you mind if I like to ask you to to give us a picture of the um, a global capital flow? If you look at um, global capital flows, um, what dictates current flows is very much related to the amount of excess liquidity out there mm -hmm. in the global capital market. As we all know, since the global financial crisis, many central banks, particularly central banks of advanced economies, have resorted to the use of unconventional monetary policies, mm -hmm. pumping in a lot of liquidity into the global um, capital market. And, and that has, has resulted in excess liquidity that can move very quickly from one market to another market, from one asset class to another asset class, depending on on the news and expectations of the market. I think it's very encouraging to see the Federal Reserve's is on the tightening path, a normalization path, uh, the, the term that uh, we, we often call, we often refer to in central banking. Um, if at central banks of advanced economies follow the normalization path, um, excess liquidity globally should, should become more normalized. And I think that, that would be healthier for the global capital market. And in which direction the um, global economy is heading to? There are a lot of encouraging signs that um, the global economic recovery is picking up stronger and stronger. If you look at um, recent economic indicators coming out from the US, mm -hmm. um, the labor market is becoming um, full employment, basically. I think that's the main reasons why, why the Federal Reserve has started to unwind the, 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 the easing uh, stance of its monetary policies. Um, if you look at what's happening across Europe, um, it's, it's also encouraging to see increasing economic activities on a more broad-based basis. And, and also employment numbers start to, to go up mm -hmm. as well. In Asia, um, China, yes. uh, we had a lot of concerns last year um, when the Chinese government started to rebalance its economy and started its programs to reduce excess capacity in a number of key sectors. And people were also concerned with uh, capital outflows from China, mm -hmm. um, you know, stock market uh, movements that you know, when the central banks and key authorities had to come up with, with um, measures to address sharp movements in in, in the stock market and in capital outflows. The situations appear to stabilize um, this year. But um, in, in general, I think I would say that the, the global economic recovery is become, uh, is become more broad-based. 
but obviously there are concerns about uh, risks up there. Um, although you know the baseline is improving, but if you look at um, potential risks that might affect global economic development, there are more risks lately. Uh, firstly, is the trend towards protectionism uh, that has been triggered by political developments in some major advanced countries. And you know, if uh, trade protect protectionism um, become more evident, that will lead to retaliation policies from other countries. And, and that, that, that is not helpful for anyone in the world, basically. Secondly, we have to be uh, mindful of um, geopolitical risks. Mm -hmm. As, as we have seen uh, developments uh, in the Korean Peninsula, yes. in the Middle East, economic and political relationships between uh, major advanced economies with mm. Russia. The other structural issues that we also need to be, to be mindful of is the amount of corporate debt that has gone up uh, sharply globally. When, when many central banks uh, resorted to the use of unconventional monetary policies by you know, lowering interest rates and then putting in a lot of liquidity into the financial markets. And that led to increasing leverage of households and also of large corporates. Uh, and the unwinding or the deleveraging process of this large amount of debt is the process that needs to be managed and need to be handled carefully. Well, that's, that is the picture of the global and um, the regional. What about in Thailand? This year, 2017, marks 20 years after the Asian financial crisis of 1997. Yes. Uh, if you allow me, I would use that as a Please. reference point to Please. compare the situations of the Thai economy today with our situation 20 years back. Um, I would say that you know, the Thai economy has come a long, long way from our position 20 years ago. Um, we don't have the same um, degrees of structural fragility mm -hmm. as we had uh, 20 years ago. Um, the economy does not depend on external financing as we, we used to, to depend. Uh, if, you, if you may recall, um, 20 years ago, our current account deficit had been in the range of about 7-8% of GDP mm -hmm. on a continuous basis. Um, and that led to uh, foreign borrowing. Uh, the Thai economy back then uh, borrowed a lot of money from abroad, a lot of capital inflows flowing into uh, the so-called you know, hot sector, hot money, mm -hmm. the like of real estate, uh, property developments. And also at that time, uh, financial institutions uh, were, not, were not very strong and were not required to comply with international standards. Those were uh, the two uh, main sources of fragility uh, back then. The other source of fragility uh, that led to the crisis in 1997 was the fact that we didn't have proper macroeconomic management framework. We fixed the exchange rate. That's a rigidity in our system back then. But if you look at the situations of the Thai economy uh, today, the macroeconomic management framework, we have a floating exchange rate mm -hmm. uh, regime, a flexible exchange rate regime. So the exchange rate would, would serve as the first line of defense, you know, mm -hmm. basically um, adjusting according to the fundamental of the economy. Secondly, uh, if you look at our external positions, our external position today is very strong. Uh, our current account surplus last year I'm talking about surplus now. Surplus last year was about 12% of GDP. Uh, before the crisis of 1997, our current account deficit was in the range of 7 or 8% of GDP for many years. This year, we expect to have um, current account surplus to continue at a high level. If you look at our international reserves, our international reserve today is about 3.5 times of total external short-term debts. In, in 1997, uh, we didn't have enough international reserves to meet the obligations of external short-term debt. Okay. And, if, and if you look at the size of international reserve today, uh, it it's, can cover all external debts that we have. And that would cover private debt, public debt, short-term or long-term. 
So we have ample international reserve. Mm -hmm. and, and that serves well as a buffer during this period of global, global um, volatility. Um, we have not depended so much on external financing, mm -hmm. unlike our emerging market peers. Foreigners hold less than 10% of uh, Thai bonds outstanding. In other emerging markets, uh, foreigners might own up to 35-40% of bonds outstanding. So when there is news about US Federal Reserves started to tighten monetary policies, when there's news about the interest rate globally might go up, that would trigger capital outflows from those emerging markets. But because of our strong uh, external positions and the different buffers that we have built over the years that have provided um, a very good cushion for the Thai economy during this period of volatility. I should also emphasize that um, during the past decade, the Thai financial system has gone through a lot of reform and consolidation. We used to have a financial system consisting of small financial institutions, mm -hmm. quite fragmented. Yes. And when, when we have too many small financial institutions competing among themselves, the system cannot be healthy. Uh, but if you look at the consolidation that has occurred in the Thai financial system, uh, the Thai financial system today has a much more healthier structure. And our capital adequacy ratio is very high. Uh, it's, it's, you know, I, I think it's one of the highest in, in the emerging market world, basically. And profitability of financial institutions continue to be good. And, and that, that would ensure that financial institutions will continue to have strong buffer uh, to withstand you know, economic uncertainties that might lie ahead. What still remains as the, the potential risk for our financial system? Firstly, if you look at the financial system, um, our interest rate has been quite low uh, for, for, for many years now. Yes. Um, our policy rate is only at about 1.5%. And um, when there is excess liquidity globally, you know, that also drives the interest rate, the domestic interest rate to be low as well. When interest rates remain low for some time, we have to, um, we have to look for potential search for yield behavior that could become uh, systemic concern. When I'm talking about search for yield behavior, it's basically is when people try to get as much yield as possible, or as mm -hmm. high interest rate as possible, without giving due consideration mm -hmm. to the risks involved. In other terms, we can call it underpricing of risks. And but when interest rates go up, um, there could be firms that you know borrow short term for their long term investment, and when they can't roll over their short term debt that will result in liquidity shortage of such firms. The other concerns that I have is, is more of the economic structural concerns. Um, you know, we, have, we have to accept the fact that, um, that the Thai economy, although at a macro level, we have seen improvements in economic recovery, but the distribution of benefits from the recovery might not be as broad-based uh -huh. as one would like to see. It's very unfortunate that you know, we had a very severe drought last year, and that, that badly hit economy in the agricultural sector yes. and in the rural sector. And, and that um, you know, resulted in increases in, in, in debt among the people at the grassroots level. So despite the fact that the government has been stimulating the economy, with a lot of fiscal measures, um, that would take some time before such fiscal stimulation could trigger consumption activities in, 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 the, in, the, rural, in the rural sector. The bar now is very, very strong, I mean, not very, but strong. How can we translate that? The dollar has become weak against ah. all currencies, ah. um, you know, mainly because of the political development in the US. If you look at the dollar index since the beginning of the year, um, the dollar index is the index that measures the value of dollar against all currencies globally. The dollar index declined by about 10%. If you compare the Thai baht with the US dollar, the dollar has declined its value by about 7%. And I, I would think that it's you know, similar to the level 
of other currencies in the region that have similar economic fundamentals as Thailand. We have large current account surplus. Exports have been improving. Mm -hmm. um, you know, during the second quarter of this year, exports increased by 7 to 8 percent on a year-on-year -year basis. And look at across, across East Asia, um, exports performance have also improved. When, when exports is improving, when economy is recovering, uh, one should expect a currency of such country to become stronger. How strong is the Thai economy at the moment? And of course, uh, we are uh, looking for a sustainable future of the country. At present, the Bank of Thailand expects the Thai economy to grow at about 3.5% this year and um, up to about 36 to 3.7% next year. We have observed um, you know, stronger momentum of recovery across different, different key sectors of the economy. If you look at the, the key drivers lately, uh, one is exports. The export has um, picked up, I think, stronger than most people's expectation. During the second quarter of this year, exports went up by about 7 to 8 percent on a year-on-year -year basis. And when we look at export performance of other East Asian countries, they have also been strong. Uh, that suggests that the trend should continue. Because if you look at supply chain in East Asia, um, the supply chain has been well integrated. If only Thai exports has picked up, I would be a bit more concerned. But when you see export performance is improving across East Asia, that's quite encouraging. Mm -hmm. The second key driver is the tourism industry. Um, we should expect to get about 35 million tourists arriving into Thailand this year. Tourism will continue to be an important sector of the Thai economy. Another key driver is the fiscal expenditure program um, that comes into two forms. Mm -hmm. One is the big infrastructure projects that the current administration has been expediting over the past few years. Uh, so if you look at the, the large projects in, in the pipeline, like the dual track rail system, yes. um, you know, the mass transit system in Bangkok, Yes. the motorway networks, and they will continue to be catalysts of economic activities. The second type of fiscal um, stimulus programs are spending at the grassroots level. We have seen um, initiatives of the current administrations designing spending programs that would go to the village level or provincial level that, that, that will help ensure the distribution of of, of fiscal impact mm -hmm. uh, across the board. Uh, fiscal stimulus will continue to be, mm -hmm. to, be, to be a driver of the Thai economy. What are the sources of concerns um, of the recovery of Thai, Thailand? One is on, on um, private investment. Uh, private investment has been, has been quite low. Um, mm. But this is not a phenomenon of Thailand alone. If you look at um, global development, private investment has been or tend to be lower than, than trend when, when you compare the current global economic recovery with the past economic recovery. Uh, in this cycle, private investment tends to, be, tends to be slow. I think it has been well realized by the current government and they have been coming up with a lot of initiatives to, to stimulate private investment. Um, a major initiative is the Eastern Economic Corridor mm -hmm. uh, that will basically set up a special economic zones providing a lot of incentives to attract uh, industries of the future to Thailand. There have also been quite a number of initiatives to, um, to adjust the privilege schemes of the Board of Investment that will become more targeted towards industries that we would like to attract to the, to the country. That would take a bit of time. The other sector that um, tends to be a bit sluggish in the current cycle is consumption, uh, private consumption. Um, the, other, the other factor that might have dragged down consumption is the household debt. Ah. Um, if you look at the household debt to GDP, uh, it reached its peak at about 80% of GDP towards the end of last year and it started to come down slowly. But that level continues to be high as mm -hmm. compared to 
other emerging markets. Well, you mentioned about the lesson learned from the 1997 uh, financial crisis. Can you assure um, that the crisis like that will not happen again? Not in the near future. We have learned big lessons from the 1997 financial crisis. Um, the macroeconomic framework has been reformed, basically, from the framework itself and the way we, we, we manage macroeconomy of, of, of Thailand. The Bank of Thailand Act was amended about nine years ago, um, firstly to give the Bank of Thailand uh, central banks operational independence. Um, I think we have, we have one of the modern central banking act as compared to uh, most emerging markets. When we have more independence, we also need to be more accountable to whatever we do. Uh, most of the key policy decisions at the Bank of Thailand, according to the new act, are done by committees, mm -hmm. like monetary policy committees that make decisions on policy interest rates and exchange rate strategy, financial institutions policies committee that um, makes policy decisions on on financial system. And on these committees, we have more outsiders than insiders. You know, the Bank of Thailand executives uh, are the minority on this committee. This is to ensure that um, that key policy decisions of the countries are done uh, properly with due considerations given to all the relevant factors by, by, by experts of the country, not only, not only people inside the, the central bank alone. The Bank of Thailand has also uh, given a lot of considerations on ensuring that um, the, the financial system is, is highly resilient. Okay. Um, our regulatory framework is, is now comparable to the best practice to international standards. You know, we subject our financial institutions to regular stress tests with different uh, scenarios, uh, looking at um, you know, potential impacts that economic developments could have on, on their strengths. Uh, we have become much more stringent on the risk management framework of, of uh, commercial banks. And we have also improved the way central banks report. During the 1997 financial crisis, we didn't have good information of um, financial institutions. For instance, NPL at that time, I recall, was on the one-year non-payment basis. So we are in much better shape now. We are in much better shape now. Because you haven't detected any smoke? Oh, we have, we, there are pockets of fragility out there. Um, we have to ensure that um, we can detect those pockets of fragility quickly um, and be able to come up with remedy measures quickly and also to ring fence so that, um, you know, that pockets of fragility will not result in, in the spreading of effects across other sectors. But definitely there are pockets of fragility out there that, that we have to regularly um, keep our eyes on. We have to make sure that our radar skip screen is, is, um, is, is, is broad enough and, and also um, is uh, smart enough to be able to detect all these pockets of fragility. Well, thank you very much for having, uh, you know, for giving us a, a very clear picture of Thailand financial system and assure the strength of the Thai economy. Thank you very much. You're most welcome. Thank you. As we have heard from the governor of the Bank of Thailand today, Thailand rests on strong fundamentals to face the financial challenges and economic uncertainty that may come our way. Nevertheless, whilst Thailand is heading in the right direction toward realizing its economic potential, the key word here is prudence. As the Prime Minister has often said, for Thailand, growth must be enjoyed by all and must not exacerbate inequality or insecurity. Thank you very much for watching The Insider. See you next week. Sadi Krab.